Okay, so we are in class two of hearing God's voice, and we're working through the workbook that goes along with a book by Mark Berkler, Four Keys to Hearing God's Voice. And so maybe I'll just go over the process for what we do, and then we'll talk some more about key two, which is what we're going to be focusing on tonight. So the, the process is that we quiet ourselves down, and then we look to Jesus. We look for vision, and then we pay attention to those thoughts that light upon our mind, and then we write them down. And we try not to judge uh, the thoughts. Are they from my own head? Is that from the enemy, or is that from God as we write them down? But we write them down, and then we go back later and look at them. So those are the, the four steps, and the four keys are similar to that. The first one is that recognize God's voice as these thoughts that light upon our mind which uh, if you haven't thought of that before, it might be new to you, but paying attention to the thoughts in our head can be powerful, powerful for us. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about removing outer noise. So in our workbooks, we're on page 16, and it says key two up at the top of the page, and there's a passage there that says, my soul, wait in silence for God only, my, for my hope, is from him, from Psalm 62, verse 5. And so for this removing outer noise, there's a, there's a few chapters in the book that I thought I would read uh, to us. It's, if you have a book, it's page 150. And he's, this uh, at the top of your page in the workbook, it's removing outer noise. And so Mark Berkler writes in his book, in order for our inner self to commune with God, we must first remove external distractions. We must find a place where we can be alone and undisturbed so that we can center down into our hearts without being distracted by our external circumstances. <coughs> so it's important, and, um, and this is my aside, to try to find a place where you can be quiet and undisturbed. And that might be tough if you've got kids running around and, and other things going on, but, but that is very helpful. And the, the, an, another one is that we must learn to quiet our inner being. And for a lot of us, I think that's a big struggle. All those voices and thoughts within us that are calling for our attention. There, there may be many thoughts going through your mind. And uh, until they're quieted, it will be very hard to hear God's voice. Okay, so... You can fill in in your workbook if you want up, up at that section there, removing out of noise. So the first item would be uh, find a place where we can be alone and undisturbed. And it's really helpful to also set aside a specific time and place. And then the second one is to uh, learn to quiet our inner being. And when we quiet our inner being, that lets us step into the realm of the spirit. And then, so there's several means that you can use to quiet those voices within you. One of them is that you can write them down to be taken care of later. And, uh, yeah. Second, you can quiet your inner members by focusing them on Jesus. So when we focus on Jesus, it removes our focus from our self-focus, which is really natural and easy to be focused on ourselves and to focus on Jesus. And as Mark Berkler writes, open your eyes to see in the spirit the vision that Almighty God wants you to behold. This will bring your inner attention to the Father and to the Son. Okay, another, another way of quieting our inner being is to sense the cry of your heart. You know, what, what is on your heart? What is in your heart? You know, it might be a song of praise. It might be uh, whatever, tuning into what is on our hearts. And frequently things can just bubble up, just bubble up if we pay attention to what they are. All right. Um, 
You may feel tension in your body, and that can be a distraction, so get comfortable. Find a comfortable position. Paying attention to your breathing. I know Lucinda's big on paying attention to her breathing as a relaxation thing, and, and Mark Burkler likes that. That's what he says to do, too. So breathe deeply and slowly and not shallowly and rapidly. Just let yourself relax in that. One of the important things to pay attention to is that in becoming still, we're not trying to do anything. Because right? if we're trying, then we're striving, we're working towards something, as opposed to just being still. So we're not trying to empty our mind of everything, but we're trying to put ourselves in a position where we can receive what he has for us. And so Mark Berkler writes, in becoming still, I'm, trying, I'm not trying to do anything. I simply want to be in touch with a divine lover. I'm centered on this moment of time and experiencing him in it. So we're, we don't try to hurry it or force it, but we allow it to happen. And at a point in your stillness, God takes over and, you're sent, and you sense his active flow within you. His spontaneous images begin flowing with a life of their own, and his voice begins speaking, giving wisdom and strength. You find that you are in the spirit when that happens. It's really good. And he's got a Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, which I don't have a Bible in front of me, so I don't know what that says. Good. All right. Thank you, Jamie. All right. And Mark also ver um, points out that, you know, being still is like an art that's learned, and it's challenging for people in the Western culture to, to still themselves because we're not typically still. And I guess maybe other cultures are more still. So in our workbooks on page 17, we have identifying the state of being still. So for you right now, I invite you to look at each one of these sections. There's one, two, three, four, five, five different sections. The first one is being physically calm versus tense. And on that scale of zero to four, zero being calm and four being tense, circle the number that's closest to where you're, where you're living now and maybe where you usually live. If you usually live in a very high tension area, but you're calm now, it might be helpful for you to note that. So I invite you to just go ahead and mark in your workbooks where you are. Our goal is to be at zero, by the way, by the time we do our journaling exercise. And then uh, the next category down is focused attention. Are we able to focus this time with the Lord, or are we distracted with worries about the coronavirus or um, you know, what we're going to do uh, you know, when we have to run to the food store after we leave or whatever that is. Um, yeah, are we, are we able to focus or are we distracted? And when we're focused, then we are expectant. It brings us into that place of being expectant that something's going to happen. So go ahead and mark in your book uh, where you are now and maybe where you usually are. Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. I don't have my Bible. Uh, yeah, I think, it, I think it's an abridged version. It says, Let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. So, um, okay, so we've done physically how we're feeling and our focused attention. Are we focused? Are we distracted? The next item is control. Uh, can we give up control? Can we give up uh, influencing what is happening? Or are we in a mode of control? We have to control the situation. And from Psalm 46, verse 10, maybe it's written here. 
Um, I've written in my margin, uh, a version of the Bible says, be still, let go, cease striving, and know that I am God. So are you at that point where you can let go and let whatever is going to happen happen? Or do you want to try to um, hang on to some control in the situation? Obviously, we want to be on the letting go side as we open up. The next category down is uh, receptivity and activity. And I'll read off the uh, Bible passage here from John chapter 15. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. So this place of abiding, can we abide in the Lord? And then I invite you to mark where you are in that spectrum. And then at the, the last category down, the spontaneous flow versus analytical thoughts. And I think this is really, really important because in my experience, analytical thoughts cut off the flow, the flow of Holy Spirit. And maybe I should say, you know, when we tune to flow, which might sound weird, I know it was weird the first time I heard it, that what we're really doing is tuning to that, that flow of thoughts that are flowing through us. And so if, if we get into a place where we can just receive that flow without trying to do anything with it, then it keeps going. But if we get to the point, and I do this, I, I might have said this before, I get to this point where we're like, hey, I'm seeing a vision. I wonder what this means. Um, then, then we can truncate what's going on when we start thinking about what's happening. So my encouragement to you is to allow the flow to happen until it stops, at which point you can go back and say, I wonder what that was all about. It's almost like when you have a dream, you know, you go through that dream and you might wake up and you go, yeah, I had that dream. I wonder what that was about. Well, you can apply that same kind of methodology. You know, you don't wake up in the middle of the dream and go, huh, what was that about? Well, maybe if it was a bad dream, you would. But uh, most of the time, I would say you don't. So um, the Bible passage from John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39, he who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his inmost being shall flow rivers of living water. By this he spoke of the Spirit, whom those who believe in him were to receive. Those rivers of living water, that's what we want to tap into, that flow of the Lord. Okay. All right, all right. So uh, let me do an, uh, an opening prayer, and then we're going to go into our journaling, uh, journaling exercise. Um, so maybe maybe one other thing. If we turn on page 18, um, there's some there's a space for other characteristics of the state of stillness. Does anyone have thoughts of what other characteristics of this state of stillness might be? Okay. Yeah. God's peace. Sure. Any any other thoughts on what that state of stillness might be? Yeah, right. Oh, no judgment. That, yeah, we're not um, not judging. Maybe we don't have an agenda, too, in our, as we're coming to the Lord. Humility. Humility. Approaching the Lord in, from a place of humility. Yeah. You know, one other thing that um, comes to me is thanksgiving. When we come with thanksgiving, uh, that helps us move into that place of stepping into his presence. Yeah, being in the present, being present, yeah. Mindfulness. Good. Good. All right. So um, 
I'll say a prayer and then we'll go into our journaling exercise. Yes, yeah, we're gonna do the journaling exercise on page 18. Should we continue our video or? Okay. okay, all righty. So um, I'm gonna read this personal application section. Lord, please talk to me. All right, this is what we're gonna be doing in just a few minutes. Lord, please talk to me about becoming still. What avenues are most effective in bringing me to inner stillness? What are your thoughts concerning stillness? And then we're going to write our person, write, all right, here's the instructions from Mark Burkhardt. Write your personalized form of the above questions in the space that follows. Then relax, picture yourself with Jesus in a comfortable gospel setting, maybe walking along the Sea of Galilee, if you can picture that, or strolling through the fields of Judah. Turn to him and see his love and compassion and joy and excitement of being able to spend this time with you. Smile. And I do want to emphasize that smile because this is a happy time. This is a joyful time. It's not a groaning uh, effort, it, but it is a joyful opportunity. Become a child and take his hand. Allow the scene to just happen as the Holy Spirit wants it to. Ask him the question on your heart. Tune to spontaneity and jot down the answer he gives you. Do not test it while you're receiving it. Stay in simple childlike faith and you will have plenty of time to test it after the flow is finished. And as I was reading that, I, I remember one time that uh, when I was journaling, I was walking along with Jesus and he was in ahead of me and I was like a, a half step behind him, kind of struggling to keep up. And I asked him, I said, Lord, you know, why can't, why are you always ahead of me? Why can't I keep up? And he said, because I'm leading you. And I was like, well, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, you never know what's going to happen, but it's always way cool. Yeah, so, so, all right, so I'm going to read the top paragraph. It says, Lord, please talk to me about becoming still. What avenues are most effective in bringing me to inner stillness? Where the Lord really does know us the best. And what are your thoughts concerning stillness? And so you might write something like, Lord, teach me what I need to know about being still. Or, you know, so. Okay, so... So form your question, form your question that you want to ask the Lord. 